It's been some time since we last seen child actor DJ Daniels. D.O. Hughley and his on-screen son from the Hughleys recently sat down with Vlad TV to talk about their careers, their time working together, and the murder charge in which DJ would face life in prison for back in 2011. It was also revealed that D.O. would also share that he took the stand to defend Daniels. After a long trial, DJ was eventually acquitted on all charges after one of his friends confessed during the trial. Today on the show, we've got our comedy hype analysts, Rita Brent, Capone and Pierre, to talk about DJ Daniel's case and why it appeared so many child actors go down the wrong path. Now guys, before we dive into this, I do wanna set things up a little bit. So for any viewers that may or may not know, back in 2012, DJ Daniels was on a murder trial for a 2011 stabbing. Um, and in this Vlad interview, what he's revealing is not you know, just on how, but who helped him get out of this, if you will. So his friend actually took the stand and admitted to the murder. Uh, and I think a lot of people are just surprised to one, see him for the first time, but then also to hear that backstory. So I just want to read a quote from that interview. He says he, talking about his friend, told on himself, that's why we got to go home. If it wasn't for him, we would have been in there probably. He took the stand and said it was all me. Now, Pierre, starting with you, after hearing this information, but also seeing DJ Daniels for the first time in what seems like forever, what were your reactions? At first, I didn't know. I thought y'all was, was, I thought it was, a, you know, I thought Vlad Deep TV had another DJ he was interviewing, basically, to be honest with you. I didn't recognize none of that underneath that face. I didn't know if that was DJ from, from DL show, if that was Post Malone. I didn't know what the hell them tattoos was on his face. But, uh, and that gun was fire, too. I'm gonna tell you right now, that chewing gun was fire. I don't know what it was made out of, but it was fire. Um, but like he said, his boy told, you know, his boy took the stand. I mean, if he didn't have to do anything with it, then uh, thank God that his friends, you know, the friend that actually did it stood up and said something. Because like I said, he, like he said, he could have been in jail right now for a long time. So he was cool by keeping quiet. I mean, look, whatever happened, happened. And he's free man now. And his boy took the charge. If the boy did actually did it. You know, he got what he, he got, I guess he got what he deserved, but you know what, 11 years, if he acts like he has some sense in there, he'd be out for six. It is a murder, unfortunately, and you know, someone's not coming back, but yeah, he, you know, he did what he had to do. He's out, you know, he's out, you know, and Absolutely. obviously he's not going to be an actor no more because that facial stuff, I don't know what that's about, but it's all good. Gotcha. So Rita, I want, I want to come to you next. Um, have you seen the clip and when you did, if you did, what were your reactions to not just the look, but the information that we, we put out there? I don't know, it made me reevaluate my friends list. Like, I'm gonna text everybody, be like, will you take a murder charge for me? Because that is serious. But it also made me feel like, well, maybe his friend thought he still had some kind of potential as an actor. And when I saw the tattoos, I was blown away by the tattoos. I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, it's one thing to have a sleeve and something on your neck, but to cover your whole face. But he did say that he thought he was done acting. And as you know, in the acting world, you can still get a gig. Like his latest thing on IMDb is a short documentary where he was thug number two. So it's not like he can't, you know, still get roles. I just wouldn't have done that. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have tattooed my whole face. So that was surprising. But I don't know. Hopefully he could just, you know, find a way to, to get back and uh, acquainted in the world because this, this, this is just, it's crazy. And I think another thing that he revealed is that he chose not to take the stand. You know, his friend ended up standing up and saying, you know, hey, I take all the blames. His friend was like, stop looking at them. It was all me. I did everything. And I think a lot of people, Rita, you hit it right on the head. A lot of people are now looking at their friends like, you know, would you take it? But also, what would you do if you were DJ Daniel? So, Pierre, I want to start with you. Given this new information that has been revealed, what would you do? What would you do if you were DJ Daniels in this situation? First of all, you're not going to be my friend. If you murder somebody and I ain't got nothing to do with it, and you don't tell, and you talking about you're gonna tell on me, nigga, that's your that's your job. If you my friend and you did the murder, then you should be the one talking, and I should have to, to get up on stand. So my friends better not do that. So the friends I have better not do that. If they kill somebody, they better take their charge. Or I'm gonna get on it and I'm gonna snitch. I'm gonna show my white side, my black side, my medium side. I'm snitching, nigga. I'm gonna tell everything you did beforehand and how you did it and everything how you did it. I ain't had nothing to do with that. If I didn't commit a murder and my friend <laughs> committed, I would talk to my friend and tell him, I think you need to tell these people what they need to know and uh, let me go home. I need to go home. I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't do it, I would maintain my innocence. And it seems like that's what he did. 
Uh, you know, he had some good lawyers. They told him not to take the stand, and now he's doing DJ Vlad interviews. So I think he made the right decision. And he had D.L. Hughley's support, you know. Uh, D.L. Hughley was a character witness for him, so. And as I mentioned earlier, D.L. Hughley actually said he did take the stand to defend him because he is, you know, although on screen he was his son, but also off screen he's genuinely somebody that he cares about. So that was definitely beautiful to see. Another thing I feel like this interview touched on is something that we see all the time. And that's seeing childhood actors as they grow up, they kind of take what the world calls, you know, the wrong path or what we can put into the wrong path. And I think this is just another example of that. So Pierre, I'm gonna come back to you. Is there anybody that you've known, cause I know you've been in the industry for a while that has gone from a child actor to now an adult actor that has either A, took the wrong path or B, even decided to, you know, take the other side of, of that, if you will, Pierre. Right, right, and I, I'll, I'll answer that, but one second. The, the, the comment we were just talking about, he's lucky because a lot of times the judicial system figures if one person did something, they're taking everybody down. So he's actually got lucky mm -hmm. that he got the chance to escape from that because usually if you murder somebody, you with somebody, around somebody, they take everybody down. You know, especially if you're a young black male, they're trying to take everyone down. So he did get very lucky on that situation. About actors, um, you know, it's funny. People think that when you're an actor, like you, and you hit success at a certain time, that you have no choice but to continue just to be an actor. Like you can't, like you're not allowed to say, I don't want to act no more, I want to do something different. You know, everyone else in their job, someone could be a painter and then turn around and want to be an electrician or a car salesman or someone could work at an office and turn around and want to own a business. We give them people a chance to do whatever they want and be successful. But if you've been in the sports industry, let's just say not the sports, let's say an actor, and you do not continue to be an actor for the rest of your life, it almost feels like the next job you have, you're a failure. And that's unfair. Because I applaud my friends who are comedians who were in the business back in the 90s or whatever. And let's say they didn't do well or, you know, it had a time that was really well during the BET days. And now they chose to do something different and they're making a living and raising their family. Man, I applaud them. You ain't got to be a comedian or actor forever. It's the people outside the business who don't understand that, that feel like, hey, once you're in the business, you need to stay in the business. You know, I think that is uh, unfair as an entertainer to have to, you know, be on a certain level for the rest of your life when the average person doesn't have to be like that. Why do you think that we, we see that so much where, you know, childhood actors are one way when they're, but as they continue to grow into their adulthood, they start to get into trouble. Capone, what are, you, what are your thoughts on why that is? Knowledge of the business. I don't think that their parents have much knowledge. And sometimes when you treat people a certain way, they actually absorb like they're different and uh, they're really not. And so when that, change comes about a lot of people can't handle it like Pierre said they turn to drugs they turn to I mean you get the average person who not even a child an adult who gets a good break and has a, mm -hmm. a taste of success they feel like they mm -hmm. are uh, better than everybody and, and that's not a good thing you know it, it's a job just like any other thing except that it's uh it's become you're you're a little bit more popular but that's it in some cases right and I feel like in this generation, we're starting to see people kind of pop earlier, if you will. Like it takes a, a, a slower time for people to be able to gain that notoriety or, you know, that celebrity status. So, Rita, in closing for you, what, what are your thoughts on that? You know, seeing childhood actors kind of grow up and venture off into the wrong path, if you will. Well, it's several components. Like Capone said, some of the parents who are the, the momagers or whomever, they can get really greedy and take the money and not do what they're supposed to to, to build them up for the future. Um, and like you just said, Symphony, I think it is horrible that you can get famous really quick as a child because social media is so ruthless. I was looking at some of these uh, younger actors, their parents are trying to defend them on Instagram because people are criticizing them like they are adults. And that is, is challenging to deal with cyberbullying as a child. It's, it's challenging to deal with it as an adult. I definitely agree with you. I think, you know, there's so much that comes out of this interview, just outside of DJ Daniels revealing how he got acquitted. There's so much in seeing this. So it's, it's good seeing him. It's good seeing him and D.L. Hughley together. Um, I know, Rita, you say he's done some stuff recently. So hopefully we, we continue to see him grow in that. But, you know, I guess we'll, we'll see where time takes us. I appreciate all you for calling in today. You heard from us now, we wanna hear from you below in the comments. What are your thoughts on DJ Daniels being acquitted for murder? For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson.